another episode of Dries's Kitchen. Today we're going to prepare three wonderful tropical based meals for you. And our first course to Oli today is going to be? Uh, Oli is still sleeping this morning. Plantain, coconut, tamarind and fresh coriander soup. And for the main course? I think Oli is still sleeping this morning. Yes, for the main course, braised beef with tamarind, kaba, and coconut. But I'm going to leave the tamarind out on this dish, and I'm only going to use kaba. This is a local fruit available in the bush, free of charge. You can pick it everywhere. And for dessert, Oli? And for dessert, triple coconut today, a coconut tart. So we've got a coconut soup, we've got a coconut in our soup, we've got a coconut in our main course, and we've got a coconut in our dessert. So stay with us, and let's start with step one. Now, in a lot of Asian cooking, you find tamarind. This product over here, tamarind, which is also available locally is a very common ingredient in food preparation, okay? But what I have done is I've taken the tamarind, which you can buy in your local markets, either in Bacao, Banjul, or Saracunda, mixed with some boiling water, let's say about a handful of tamarind, with let's say about half a liter of water. You can keep adding boiling water as you wish to get the desired density or the desired flavor. Some like it weak, some like it strong, okay? But I've also done something new. I've taken kaba. Ça va, ma chère? Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Okay. Uh, I've, I've taken kaba, okay? Which is a locally available fruit. It costs nothing. It's cheap. I've also soaked that in boiling water to get a similar effect to the tamarind. Now, what we've discovered is when you taste the tamarind and you taste the kaba, you almost can't tell the difference between one and the other. They have the same flavor, okay? So instead of using tamarind in your dishes that have oriental flavors to them, we can use kaba, which has the same effect, which is a local flavor, all right? So the next thing we're going to use is coconut milk, of course, something you can get in all your supermarkets. Uh, that's going into the mixture, all right? Some sesame oil over here, also available in your local supermarkets, all right? Some kani, which is available here. Local kani, very good, very fresh, okay? And some garlic, which Oli should have peeled for me, but it's lying somewhere. Okay, some local salt from Saro, our beautiful salt over here again. And some black pepper over here, nicely coarsely ground again today. We've also got some fresh lime ready to be squeezed. And last but not least, for the starter, your chicken broth. Now we've made this chicken broth by boiling chicken bones, carrots, onions, and a hint of garlic. We've got a beautiful broth here now which is going to make an excellent base for our coconut, plantain, tamarind, and fresh coriander soup. The plantains are over there. Oli, can we have the plantains, please? As you can see, make sure they're black, make sure they're soft, make sure they're super ripe. They taste better when they're ripe. That's when all the sweetness comes out, okay? And of course, fresh coriander. Fresh coriander right over here. Beautiful fresh coriander. The word for today is concentration. And if you look to your right, you will notice we've got a very special guest, the lady with the amazing voice, the lady with the electric voice, Sambu Suso. Yay! There you are. So she's going to do that tasting for us today. And I tell you, if she says it's good, you better be sure it's good, because that voice can only taste good things. All right? Now, to begin with, we have four cloves of onion, sorry, four cloves of garlic, which Oli has chopped for us, two onions, which she's going to chop, please, two onions, which she's going to chop, and then half a chili. This is too hot, so we're going to use just half of this without the seed. Take 100 milliliters 
of sesame oil. Put it in a hot pan. There we are. Then what we do is we throw our onions and garlic and chili in there, Oli, please. Okay. Into the pan. Fry it. Okay. Wow, I can smell that coming across already. All right. And then what we do is we take this. Can you see over here? Yeah. Mix the whole thing together. Can I have the teaspoon measurement, Oli, please? Okay, this is all cooking here in this wonderful sesame oil. Beautiful product, look at this. Please take a close-up of this, it looks really nice. Okay, then we take a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Sorry, uh, coriander seeds. I really am not concentrating today. I, had, I worked all day yesterday, you know. Sunday, I didn't get a day off, and I was working till very late at night organizing the family pictures, till two in the morning. I organized about 700 photographs last night, till two in the morning. Okay, one teaspoon of cumin seeds, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, all right? Oli, can you chop me the plantains quickly, please? There we are, all together. Oh, this smells good, okay. Well, look at this beautiful color. Isn't this lovely? This is called a plantain. It's got a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, pinkish color. Wow. Mm, this is nice, beautiful, nice stuff. Wow, this is excellent. Okay. There we are. I'm gonna let this cook in here. Now that one obviously is riper than this one because look at the second one. Huh? The second one is not as pink as the first one, it's whiter which means that the flavor is more concentrated in the pink one because it's riper. And whenever a banana ripens, the riper it gets, I'm sorry, I splashed that on you. The, ri the, the riper it gets, the more concentrated the flavors are. You have to fry the onions, the garlic, and the chili for two minutes in the sesame oil. Then we'll fry the plantains for another two minutes or so. And then what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I can either make the soup in here but I think I'm gonna transfer it to a bowl, okay? Well, there you are, this is about ready. If you wish, you can maybe put your chicken broth and coconut milk in here to cook the soup, but no, this is too small. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna transfer it in here. Now, next thing we do is we take this chicken broth, which we prepared by boiling chicken bones, chicken bones, onions, and carrots. We need approximately about 800 milliliters, which I'm gonna pour straight into here. Okay, now mix the whole thing together. There you are. Okay. Mm, Oli, you wanna smell that? Okay. And then we're gonna throw in about uh, 600 milliliters of coconut milk. Oli, can you open this for me quickly? So about one and a half of these can. Each can is 400 milliliters. I'm gonna throw in one and a half cans, making it 600. So we've got about 400 milliliters over here of coconut milk. Yummy, 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 beautiful stuff. So now we're gonna take our tamarind and pour it in here. Hooray, 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 hooray. And by the way, guys, it's Monday, all right? I won't lie to you. It's been a hell of a day. We've had no concentration in this place today. Our producer showed up at 11.30. He was lacking concentration this morning as well. Okay, Oli, we've got to put in about 250 milliliters of tamarind paste, but I think what we'll do, uh, we're gonna take this here. This is about 230. Pour some of it in here. And I will throw, there we are. There we are. Okay. Pour this in. Okay, there we are. This is going to simmer for about, let's well, say about, just allow it to boil. Let's say about 15 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes, huh? Okay, now we're ready. We're going to take the banana, turn the heat down to begin with, because this is all simmering in here, as you can see all this smoke. Then we're gonna take the bananas and, uh, Remove the liquid, put them in the blender. Mm, I'm sure babies would love this. 
It's like baby food. Delicious. Okay, there we are. I think we've done this right. Now we're gonna take it out. And Oli, I don't think I'm gonna pour all of this in here. I think I'm just gonna pour a little bit at a time. Yeah, because this might make the soup too thick. So what I'm gonna do is, what the chicken pieces I used to make the stock, I'm gonna throw it back in here, which means we removed all the flesh from that. And we're gonna throw that flesh in here. Coriander Yeah, just like that, whole coriander. And we're gonna throw some fresh coriander and samba. We're about ready. Here we have a wonderful uh, uh, plantain, tamarind, coconut, and fresh coriander soup. Okay, Sambu, nyungi am nakchibir soup bi, ganar, tamarind, moi dahar, coconut milk, uh, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, tutti fresh coriander, sesame oil, Aka chicken stock. Moi ham ga chicken stock bilen koi da fal akya hi ganar. Anyo bahal ya hi ganar bi. Ak carrot, ak sable, tuti horo mak pobar. Legi mosal malinga wah masamba lo hala chili. Wah mal Luisa hala chili. Why explain ma clearly nak de ah ah deng mai wah majo hala ko ah deng mai wah dega dega nakala affair bi mel chaf ko bi nakala dame. Nice. Hmm. Nehna. Bilai. Nakala ne he? Ne harira. Ah. Mag blueberry na kisil. Blueberry. Bilay. Mag yaram bilay. Ne kani. Ah. Yakam tinar. Bilay. Ah, gusto ako de. Mune from ne kani yaram ambe. Ah, blueberry la si feel. Mune nyo yakam te ag balance be. Ngane? Dinam na way blueberry kung ne. Mune legi na way be. Duta how feel be elek na way. Affair be ne na? Gusto ako de. Ah. Mungay explode sa gaming. Chef ko yep. Ah, dega ngayon ko. Mungay ligay chiara mo. Guess nga another happy customer. Braised beef with kaba, coriander, and fish sauce. A typically local product again, made with your local kaba that grows all around the place. You can pick it in the bush. Oh wow, look at this. We're using filet today. This is a beautiful piece of Gambian beef. You couldn't find this better anywhere else in the world. And certainly not this flavor. Okay? Ali? Yeah, he's gonna slice it for us. Don't they come the pepper steak? Yeah, we have about 750 grams. So we're going to pour a little bit of sesame oil, huh? Some sesame oil. In here, we've got our 700 grams of beef filet or any tender piece of beef, beautifully sliced already. I'm sure Sambu's mouth is watering already. I can see that. When it's beef, she's excited, okay? Three garlics in the pan, because look, I think we need some garlic in here. Oops, sorry. Life without garlic is like life without what I would not like to say on television. You need garlic to give accent, flavor, passion, and heat. Okay, then we're gonna simmer this together with the garlic. There we are. Make sure your beef is always colored. A little bit of color, you see? There are all those tourists that fly about 5,000 kilometers away just to get some color. You know, you need color. Color is important in everything, even on the skin. All right, there we are. So, put some color into the meat. Yeah? Are you enjoying this show? Yeah. yeah? All right. I think your sister is a bit surprised with me. She's looking at me like, who is this man? What is he all about? Well, this is what I'm all about. Right here, live and direct. Okay? So, a little bit of color, very important in everything. This, there's a huge industry around color, sun tanning, heat, blue waters, blue waters, sunshine, sun tan, sun tan oil. Yeah, color, meat needs color. Otherwise, you can't eat it. It looks disgusting without it, okay? All right, now I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna throw two tablespoons of fish sauce in here. Oh, 
Actually, I think I want to put more than two. What do you think? You put three tablespoons of fish sauce in here. Okay. Then we're going to throw in some beautiful kaba. Okay. Kaba juice. Really, what you should put in about 60 milliliters. Okay, is what you should do normally. Where's the measuring um, container? Okay, we're not gonna go. 60 millimeter, milliliters, we'll say. There we are. That's your kaba juice in there. Have you ever cooked with kaba, Lasse? I hear there's a lot of kaba in Dar es Salaam all over the bush. Maybe you should start bringing us some. Yeah. Oh, smells nice. Good. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is throw in some coconut milk. Again, some coconut milk. Okay, there we are. All right. Into the pan. Okay. Okay, I think a little bit of fresh coriander, Oli. Sambo, you might enjoy this one more than the other one. Yeah? Sorry? Kani, some kani, yeah. We're going to throw some kani in a short bit. We're just going to throw in some coriander now, some fresh coriander to give it some flavor. We throw a little bit of nice hot kani. Hot kani, kani, kani. Yeah, all right, all right. Now this meat, as you can see, is simmering in this beautiful combination of delicate flavors. I'm going to reduce the, take, remove the beef now. Tiny little bit of sugar, maybe a pinch full of sugar. This is called experimenting. Shall we do it, Oli? Shall we put one or two? Uh, I think two. Okay, now let's mix the whole thing together. And we might now reach perfection. Maybe we're reaching perfection now. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mm. Mm. One more. Two more. There's two more. Okay, a little bit of sugar in there does the job. And next time, Oli, maybe we should use brown sugar. Yeah, brown sugar. You know, this is how we come up with great recipes. It's all about trying and tasting and mixing, experimenting. Next time, I'd use brown sugar, OK? Mm -hmm. I think we got it right. I think we're going to throw this meat back in here. OK, we heat it up. How long have we been cooking in there for? This has been simmering now for about 15 minutes, yeah? Use 15 minutes as your guideline. You know, first you have the steak in there with the sauce and everything. And then you first brown the steak, then you put all the juices in, and then you simmer it. You simmer it with the meat for about five minutes, six minutes, and then let's say another 10 minutes to 15 minutes simmering without the meat, and maybe five minutes to get the meat heated up. So look, you're looking at a cooking time from about zero to 20 minutes. Here we have a tower of beef cooked in kaba. Concentrated juice made from kaba, with no sugar, of course. Kaba, this bush stuff. Fish sauce, fresh coriander, coconut milk, some garlic. Here you have a beautiful product. Enjoy it. Eat it with a nice bowl of boiled rice. Oh, there we are, already now for tasting. Sambu is going to try this beautiful piece of beef. Sambu, didn't they like a cani? Yeah, this wonderful piece of beef, this nice flavor. Ah, Sambu, please try this. Tell us what you, what you feel. Okay. Here we are. Mm. Nice? nice. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Tasty? You get the sour flavor from the, from the, from the kaba? Yeah? I tell you, Samba, Samba. Yeah? 
She says the kaba flavor is coming out. Yeah. Uh, it's good. Is it bursting in the mouth with flavors? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. An another satisfied customer. Sambu says it's full of flavor. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if she's fooling me or not. If she's telling me the truth. Nasa dahmung my fuhal. Wala dahmung my wahdega. Hara maset mantemid nakomos. Maset. All right, now we prepare for you a wonderful coconut tart. I know we've prepared the Congolese before, but that was more like a coconut macaroon. Uh, the Congolese is actually a baked uh, macaroon. It, it's a different texture. This is moister and full of flavor, something completely different. So Alfonsi, what are we going to do now? We're going to start with about one cup of flour, correct? All right. Well, Alfonso wants to make more today. She says we're going to start with one and a half cups. OK, there we are. That's one cup. Now, what we're doing is we're making the pastry. And this pastry casing you can use for any tart. So just, oh, oops, no, one and a half. Take this recipe down and remember it. Write it down. This is the recipe for any pastry casing. OK, and if you want to make it with something savory, keep the icing sugar out. We're going to put icing sugar. OK, so we have about one and a half cups of flour. All right. Then we're going to put in some icing sugar. How much do you want here? Huh? Look at this beautiful white powder. It's delicious. Icing sugar. You can eat it like this if you want. Half cup. OK, half a cup of icing sugar. OK. I was going to make a remark there, but I'm glad I didn't. OK, icing sugar, half a cup. There we are. OK. We're going to put in about 125 grams. OK, there we are. Butter goes to the middle. Here we are. Butter's in the middle. OK, nice and neat. Everything done neatly. No mess. I like a no-mess kitchen, all right? A no fuss kitchen and a no mess kitchen. Keep your work area tidy. All right? Garbage, please. Hello? We don't have a garbage can today. Oh, our guest has been super patient. I mean, uh, she doesn't know that I, I actually enjoy having her here. So I've tried to slow everything down to keep her longer because her aura and her presence is just so, so uh, calming and it has such a good effect particularly when she starts to sing. Wow, she gets you going. And I hope she'll do us an a cappella. You can't sing. No, Sambo, you have to sing. You have to sing, yeah? OK, Sambo is going to give us an a cappella. She's going to give us something like an operatic voice going, ah! and all the walls in this house is going to crack. Yeah, everything's going to go, Shh. The glass will break, the walls will crack, the windows will break, everything. Yep. And then I'll even fly from that power. I'll go high up. That's Sambu Suso, the best in the Gambia. OK? All right? So now we put the, show them just quickly. Over here, we have similar to what we made for our condensed milk pie. But that one had corn flour. This one doesn't. So it's more or less all the same concepts, huh? the same basic concept. Be careful, concentrate before the eggshell goes into your mixture. There we are. Beautiful egg, all going into the container. OK, now we have our, our dough, which is ready. We're going to put some flour on the board so it doesn't stick, OK? There we are. And you know, we have got some of this fine grated coconut here. I don't like this stuff, to be honest with you. It's too fine. It's too dry. It's not good enough. Uh, can you get me the grater from the kitchen? Yeah, and Oli, tell Oli to come with the grater. We're going to grate this beautiful fresh coconut. This is good stuff. 
it's still got some juice inside. Wow. Would you like to drink the juice from the coconut? Yeah. OK, can I have a knife, please? Yeah, quick, quick, quick. A sharp knife and a little cup. And we'll give some bususo, some coconut, fresh coconut juice to lubricate her vocal cords so she can give us a good track. Yeah, OK. A little, a little uh, cup as well, Sambu. I'm going to cut this coconut for you. Wow, look at this beautiful stuff. Give me a small cup, quick, quick, quick. Oh my god, this is nice, Sambu. You have some nice, 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 nice coconut juice here to make your voice sound like heaven. Look. Wow, full of natural juices. Here we are, Sambu. You see how well we take care of our people here? Yeah. We take care of her because she gives us good sounds. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Enjoy. OK, Oli, can you grate this for us? I don't really want to use this, this horrible stuff, this imported coconut powder. Oh, we have fresh coconuts. Now, Oli's grating some fresh coconut for us here. But I'm still going to use a little bit of this one for the simple reason that this is really imported stuff. It's dry. So this will soak up a little bit of the mixture that we're going to put in the coconut tar, tart, OK? For the sake of absorption, I will use some of this. But we're going to sprinkle all of this beautiful, crunchy, fresh stuff on top to give it a bursting flavor in the mouth. She takes a little bit of butter, rubs it on the pan, OK? So it doesn't stick. Make sure it doesn't stick. Always make sure it's loose, OK? All right? Grate it in here, please. OK, one of the principles of cooking, keep it loose all the time. All right? The moment it sticks, it's gone. You'll have no action. OK. All right, there we are. I hope you understand my culinary terms, Mr. Segon. Yeah, OK, there we are. So now we're talking about non-stick, loose, free. Oh, sticky's not good. No, no, sticky is not good. Stick is only good with toffee. Oh, okay. Only with toffee. Huh? Anything that isn't toffee that's sticky has got a problem. OK, now, Alfonso does a beautiful job at this. She rolls her dough, OK? Then she rolls it up, and then she rolls it down. She rolls her dough, then she rolls it up, and then she rolls it down. And that's the action she does when she lays her dough on her baking tray. This is called pastry making. All right? So there we are. OK. Then she forks the pastry. OK, she forks it to create air in there. OK. It's all about forking, too. All right, can we mix the, the egg mixture now, please? <laughs> One egg. OK. Two eggs. OK. Three eggs. OK. Four eggs. All right. That's a couple. Four eggs is a couple, because a pair is made out of two eggs. OK. We've got about half a cup of sugar, all right, all right, half a cup of sugar, mix it together, nice yellow, yellow, yellow mixture, nicer than the color of saffron, you got to whisk your mixture until you get a very fluffy, almost like a meringue-like texture, look at this, okay, you can hardly see the eggs in this now and the icing sugar and all of that stuff, OK? All right. So we'll melt a little bit of butter in here into the pan. Let's say about a tablespoon of butter in the pan. There we are, all melting into the pan. OK. Alfonsi, we're going to use a little bit of this, just a bit, and we're going to finish it off with the fresh one because that will absorb all the, the liquids in that batter, in that mixture. OK? OK, let's go. We, we pour the warm butter in the mixture. All right? 
It's just one of those days. Concentration has had to come into play today. All right, Alfonsi has a seed that has gone into her butter, a mixture. The seeds are flying everywhere today, bursting with zest. Okay, so fine. We mix one lime, take one lime, okay, and then squeeze it into this mixture to give a little bit of a sour taste to the mixture. And we're going to take one cup of this imported, okay, in there, okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's how I feel today. Okay, so one cup of this imported grated coconut, dry grated coconut in there. I think throw a little more in. A little more. How much do you normally put? One cup? Two. Yeah, put half a cup more. Just, yeah, that's enough, that's enough. Yeah, about that, okay. Then we take this beautiful stuff and just, oops, sorry about that. And that's gonna come out looking like a queen, a beautiful queen. So into the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. And now we've had about 20 minutes elapse and we're bringing this wonderful, wonderful coconut tart from the oven. Ooh, look at that, how beautiful. All ready to be cut. Alfonsi, please, and served. Would you put some icing sugar on top quickly? Yeah? All right, there we are. All right, flipped around. Flip it again around. There we are, some icing sugar on top, Alfonsi. Okay, please. Now we have a nice coconut tart on a bed of vanilla ice cream, something to give it moisture and uh, to offset the textures. Enjoy it, eat it quick before the ice cream melts. Bon appetit. Okay, Sambu, you're gonna give me your opinion of this coconut tart mm -hmm. together with a nice vanilla ice cream. Yeah, okay, Sambu, there we are. Oh, she can't talk now. Let's give her some time to, to experience those bursting flavors in her mouth. Let's go for her sister, Fatu. Fatu, let's go. Mmm. Nice? Yeah? I think... Tasty. Tasty. Enjoyable. It's nice, it's tasty, and it's enjoyable. Okay? Is it like bursting in your mouth with different flavors? Yeah. She says she can't find the words to express the way it feels in her mouth. Two happy customers again. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for joining this episode of Dries's Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed these wonderful tropical flavored dishes we've prepared for you. Coconut, coconut, and coconut. Yeah? We'd like to thank Sambo for being here today, for giving us this great company. And as a matter of fact, I think she's gonna give us a song. Let's go, Sambo. Welcome. Yeah. All right, let's go. We love you.